with you guys that this is probably what makes my dad's life so unique. Not only did he have great music, but it was on the it was really his life before music that made it all even more special. My dad, from the time he was that boy's age, so about 19 years old, my dad was in trouble with the law constantly. From the time he was 12 till he was 19, my dad, I don't know how many times they arrested my dad, but I do know for a fact that he escaped from wherever they put him 17 different times. Okay? That's what they like to call a pattern in the law enforcement business. Dad was a, a troubled youth, but it was always minor stuff, misdemeanor stuff, but juvenile delinquent stuff. But whenever they'd arrest him, put him in some juvenile hall or wherever, he would always break out of it and make the situation much worse than it had to be. But it was in 1958, the year that I was born, my dad was arrested for the very first time as an adult. Up to that time, it had all been juvenile delinquent stuff. But 1958, he was 18 years old. He and a friend had been drinking all day. It was uh, that time of year when the sun went down around five o'clock in the evening. It was getting dark early. So my, my dad and his buddy had been drinking all day. And somewhere along the way that day, they decided that they were gonna break into a business. Well, they got a crowbar. They went out behind this business in Bakersfield, California. And they went to trying to break into the back door of this business. When the door swings open, there stands the business owner. He knew my dad. He said, Merle, what are you doing? My dad took off running because it scared him. Well, the cops caught up with him down the road a ways, and they brought him back to the business owner. And the cops asked him, he said, sir, do you want to press charges against this boy? And he said, well, what would I charge him with, officer? And he said, breaking and entering. He said, uh, how can I charge him with that, officer? We're still open. <laughs> Think about it. My dad was trying to break into a business that was still open. That's what drinking to excess will get you. <laughs> but anyway, the, when the cops said, well, maybe we can't charge him with that, but we can charge him with public drunk, which is a misdemeanor. They took him to Kern County Jail in Bakersfield, California. They put him in the Kern County Jail, the adult jail, for the very first time. He wasn't in there two hours, and he broke out of the Kern County Jail. I don't know how They didn't find it near as funny as y'all did. Okay? But he broke out no sooner than they put him in there, and that was his 18th escape. It took him two weeks to catch him, but they finally caught up with him. And when they caught him, they branded him a habitual criminal because of all those prior escapes. And they sent him to San Quentin Prison for one to 15 years. Now, if you ain't never been to San Quentin Prison, you, you don't want to go there. That's what they like to call the big house. And they sent him there, he was an 18, 19 year old kid. And um, back in that day, they didn't mess around with you. And, um, but he made friends while he was in there though with an old man. The old man had the cell right next to his. This old man was doing life. He had actually three lives. And um, his name was Rabbit. Rabbit was probably in his late 60s, early 70s, but he and my dad become buddies. My dad was 18, 19 years old. They talked a lot back and forth between the wall that separated them. Dad would sing songs for Rabbit. Rabbit really enjoyed my dad singing. One day, my dad and Rabbit were talking, and Rabbit mentioned to my dad, he said, Merle, I think I'm going to find a way to break out of San Quentin. <laughs> my dad said, well, I want to go. He said, well, of course you can if you want to, Merle, but I'm asking you not to. Rabbit told my dad, he said, Merle, I'm an old man. I'm doing life. I ain't got nothing to lose. He said, but you're a young man. He said, Merle, you need to straighten up. Get out of here and do something with your life before it's too late for you. He's the one that planted the seed in my dad about music. He said, Merle, you got a gift for music. You need to do something with that. Don't, don't waste it. He said, don't go with me. He said, because if you do, there'll be no turning back. 
He said, because I ain't coming back here without a fight. So unless you're willing to die, you really don't want to go with me. Long story, but the old man talked my dad out of going with him on that prison break. But Rabbit and two other men did break out of San Quentin prison. And um, if you ever get in there, let me know. I'll tell you how to get out. It's pretty cool how they did it. That old man had a lot of time. He figured that out. It was pretty cool. But anyway, um, Rabbit and his friends did break out. It took the law a little while, but they found them. Caught up with them down in San Jose, California. They cornered them in a little hotel room down there. And as they surrounded the building and proceeded to take them back into custody, Rabbit and his two friends put up a fire. The two men that were with Rabbit were killed by the police trying to get away. And Rabbit trying to get away killed a policeman. And when they caught him, they tried him and they found him guilty for killing that officer of the law. And they sentenced him to die. They sent him back to San Quentin prison to execute him. And when the warden and the guards were taking Rabbit down to death row, they called it, as they were going down there, he asked the warden for one last request before he died. His last request was that my dad be allowed to sing him one more song. There was a song that Rabbit's mama used to sing for him when he was a boy, and he wanted to hear that song one more time before he died. They let my dad sing that song for Rabbit. And after that, they took him on down to death row, and eventually they did execute Rabbit. Now about that time, Johnny Cash came into the prison and did a show for the convicts. My dad seen John on stage and he said, yeah, that's what I want to do. And that's when he made his mind up to quit screwing around and start pursuing his career in music. It was, um, took him two years and nine months, but they finally let him out of San Quentin. He was 1960. He came home to Bakersfield, California, where me and my mama my sister, we were living in an old box car, and he went to work in the local bands around Bakersfield, California from 1960 to 1963, and somewhere along the way, some local guy that had a little independent record label <coughs> convinced him to, to let him cut a record off. He said, he recognized his talent, said, let's cut a record on him, boy. They did, they cut the song, they put it out, no money behind it, no, no power, no politics, nobody knew my dad from Adam. That song went top 20 in the country. That song caught the years of Capitol Records, who signed my dad to a major record deal in 1964. And every single song he ever cut in his career was top 10 or better. And uh, it was in 1966 and 67 when he wrote and recorded this great song. This is one of those staple songs of my dad's career that separated him from the pack. Most people didn't know it when this song came out, but this song was a true story. A lot of people thought he was just a country singer singing about prison. No, he was telling a story about his life. And, uh, and it wasn't until after this song that people started realizing that Merle Haggard had actually been there. But this song, he was sitting around in 1966, 1967. He'd been on, had him a little record career going for a couple of years. He had a couple of number one records under his belt. He was doing really well. And he realized how quickly his life had turned around since he was his release from prison in 1960. He realized that the advice of that old man is what turned it around and saved his life and changed the world of music forever. He wrote this song, you know it if you know my dad's music, but I bet you didn't know the whole story, and now you do.
Hey!